أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له واشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقال إني ذاهب إلى ربي سيهدين ربي هب لي من الصالحين فبشرناه بغلام حليم فلما بلغ معه السعي قال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا أبا تفعل ما تؤمر ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين فلما أسلم وتله للجبين وناديناه أن يا إبراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا إنا كذلك نجزي المحسنين إن هذا لهو البلاء المبين وفديناه بذبح عظيم وتركنا عليه في الآخرين سلام على إبراهيم we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify him and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are in difficulties to grant them ease and those who are sick to grant them shifa and those who have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon them and forgive them and make their graves spacious and gardens from the gardens of paradise. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and his blessings unto his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and unto his household and his companions and unto all those who follow him. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to count us all among the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear gathering, these days we live in the shade of one or if not the most important, the most sacred and dear event in our calendar, and that is the Hajj and the sacrifice, the sacrifice that most of us here will perform in a few weeks, insha'Allah. And the Hajj that many of our own brothers and sisters will leave shortly to, insha'Allah. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take them safely and make their Hajj easy and to accept from them and to bring them back safely. Ameen. My dear gathering, what is so important about this event? What is so special about this event? What is the impact of this event? What are the lessons and the benefits of this, this event? This special event is not just a yearly event that comes and go without any impact. It is there for a reason to impart in us, to remind us, to teach us certain behavior. This event teaches us that real sacrifice is to make sacrifice even when our limited capability, limited intellect cannot comprehend the wisdom and the logics behind why we are doing it. This event teaches us that we 
should make sacrifice even when it is difficult, even when it is painful. Real sacrifice is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without hesitation. Real sacrifice is to deny yourself the things that you are addicted to, the things that you want, the things that you love, but it is harmful for you. Real sacrifice is to accept that Allah, our Creator, loves us and knows what is best for us. Real sacrifice is to accept that we will not always get what we want, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us what is best for us. Real sacrifice is to submit and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without questioning, without hesitation, without doubt, without asking for the reason. Like the people who will be performing Hajj, the men will be wearing two towels that is not comfortable, that is not fashionable, that does not have a brand name. That they do not want to be in that. But they will submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will not perform hajj without that. The people who will be making hajj will be performing the tawaf. And they will all go in one direction. And no one will go the opposite direction or ask why I have to go in this direction. Because their hajj will be invalid. But they submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without asking for the logics. Because why? Because this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will be in Arafah. And no one will leave without before a certain time. But no one will question why I can't leave at Asir. Why I can't leave at Zuhr. We will not question it. Because that's the command of Allah. And true sacrifice, true submission is to submit to Allah without questioning. As long as we know it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take your wife, take your baby, your helpless child, and leave them in the valley of Mecca. A place without five-star hotel, without meals, without shelter. Place that is surrounded by rugged mountains where not a blade of grass grew. He is commanded to take his wife and his baby and leave them there. Did he ask question? Why? Why can't I go somewhere else where there is people? Why can't I go where there is food, where there is shelter? Why can't I go where the climate is better? But that is true sacrifice. That he submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without asking for the logics. And what kind of woman was his wife? When she understood this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she says, if it is from Allah, then Allah will take care of us. We cannot understand. But that woman who had that tawakkul, that strong faith and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she knew that this is true sacrifice. As long as it is from Allah, I will not question, I will not ask for reason. And my dear gathering, these stories are related to us, not for entertainment, not to raise our emotion and to feel sad. It is for a reason, for to remind us that there is a standard there is a standard of sacrifice that we should strive for. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was commanded now after his son, <laughs> has grew to an age where he can play with him. He is commanded to go and sacrifice that child. And without any hesitation, without a trace of doubt, not questioning, not saying, Oh Allah, I don't have 50 children, I only have one son. This is the one I made dua for in my old age. Rabbi habli min as -saliheen. He did not say, Oh Allah, why can't I sacrifice something else instead? 
Why my son? He did not question, oh Allah, what will happen to my offspring if I sacrifice him? There was no doubt, no question. He went to his son. Ya Bunaya inni arafil manami anni halbahuk. Allah has commanded me to do this. This is true sacrifice. My dear gathering, true sacrifice is not just the slaughtering of an animal. That is easy. Most of us will do it in other parts of the world. And we will pay $100 or $75 or $200. That's easy. Even the Hajj is easy. Many people go off them as long as they can afford it. But true sacrifice is to stay away from the disobedience of Allah. In this country, most of us will not have an opportunity to put a knife on the animal. But there is something that we can put a knife on. And I remind myself and you, let us put our knife on laziness. That is true sacrifice. Let us put our knife on the haram we eat and drink. Let us put our blade on not waking up for fajr. Let's put our knife. There are many young people who do weed today. Put your knife on that. That's sacrifice. Those type of company and those type of places you go, that is not healthy. Put your knife on that. That is true sacrifice. And this event teaches us that true sacrifice is to put our knife on Allah's disobedience. Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam when they were preparing for that sublime act of sacrifice. And this even teaches us that parent-children relationship. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, he is going to sacrifice his son. And look at the communication. What kind of father will go to a son and say, Allah has commanded me to slaughter you. It is only a father who had that firm conviction, who knew his son, who knew how strong his son is, who knew that his son has that tawakkul and that firm belief in Allah. How many of us have that firm belief that when we call our sons and our daughters for fajr, they will wake up and make wudu and perform salah? How many of us have that conviction when we tell our children to stay away from wrongful place and wrongful company and wrongful things that they will actually do that? Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had that conversation with his son. Oh, my son, inni arafil manami anni azbahuk. Because he had that conviction that his son will submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did the son do? Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar Satajiduni insha'allahu min as-sabirin He says by the will of Allah You will find me steadfast So do as Allah command you This is a son like father like son Submitting to the will of Allah And he said ya ya abba Ya abati, O oh my dear father, just like Ibrahim alayhi salam addresses his father. Ya abati lima ta'abdu ma la yasma wa la yubshiru wa la yughni anka shay'a. Ibrahim alayhi salam, even though his father was an idol worshiper, he addressed him with utmost respect. And so Ismail, his own son, returned that to his father. Ya abati, O oh my dear father. That is that father son relationship. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a lesson for us. How many times we show disrespect to our parents when Allah says not to even say oof to them. How many times 
we yell at them or we speak loud to them or we disobey them how many times we hurt them this event of this sacrifice of this Hajj should teach us to be respectful to our parents and to honor them and to obey them what about our mothers Hajar, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the mother of Ismail. This teaches us what our own mothers are willing to do for us. That they are willing to move mountains for us. This mother was climbing mountains <coughs> for her son. Our mothers, and my dear brothers and sisters, make no mistake. No one no one will be selfless like a mother in this world. Our wives, they will cut and run when there are difficulties. Our own brothers and sisters, they will take care of themselves. Sometimes even the fathers will sleep. But a mother will not rest. A mother will not be comfortable if there is any uncertainty in the life of a child. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us in this event and made it and forced it upon us that you cannot do Umrah, you cannot do Hajj without running and walking in the footstep of a mother. There is no Hajj because that's a rukun, that's a pillar of Hajj that you have to walk in the footstep of that mother to remind us of how important they are in our lives. And that is the family. That is that parents-children relationship. That is the type of upbringing that this great woman, the type of upbringing she instilled into that child that he can say, Ya abatif al ma tu'mar, oh my father, do. As Allah commanded you. This event, my brothers and sisters, reminds us and teaches us the importance of taking care of the next generation, taking care of our children and our grandchildren and those who will come after Ibrahim alayhi salam and Allah say to him, Inni ja'iluka linnasi imama. He says, Oh Allah, what about those who will come after me. When Allah says, I make you Khalifa. He says, what about those who will come after me? What about my children? Will there be leaders among them? Will they perform salah? And that is why he constantly made dua, Rabbi j'alni muqeema salah wa min zuriyyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. That's the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Oh Allah, make me and my offspring among those who establish salah. Rabbi habli min as salihin he says, O oh Allah, grant me offspring that will be pious, that will be righteous, that will fulfill your command, that will obey you. This event teaches us the importance of taking care of the next generation. My dear brothers and sisters, as we commemorate this event, and we commemorate motherhood and fatherhood, because this is what this event is about, as we make sacrifice, let us pay attention to what real sacrifice is. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Ibrahim alayhi salam, is qala lahu rabbuhu aslim. Allah says to him, aslim, surrender. He said, aslam to the rabbil alameen. That was his response. He says, oh Allah, I submit to you, Lord of all the worlds. And this is what should be our respond when a command of Allah is established just like those who make Hajj we don't pick and choose we demonstrate we have that we have the ability to obey Allah to follow his command to stick within his boundaries why is it after this event we question and we pick and choose and we do what is convenient to us and we leave what is a little difficult. This even teaches us that the only way we can be successful and be true serve slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to submit to him without any question.
aqulu qawli hadza wa astaghfiru li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimin fastaghfiruhu innahu ghafurur rahim Alhamdulillahi wahdah wa salatu wa salam ala man la nabiyya ba'dah Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ittaba'ahu ila yawmiddin My dear gathering When Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam when they were preparing and when they were going to fulfill that supreme act of sacrifice Iblis our enemy try to put blockade try to distract them try to deceive them try to interrupt and that's his job he will always do that but Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam they recognize him and they stone him my dear gathering, can we recognize shaitan in our homes, in our businesses? We know the shaitan in our businesses. We know the shaitan in our homes. We know the shaitan in our own lives. We know the shaitan in our workplace. We know the places where shaitan is. Are we willing? To stone him are we willing to put up a fight when for the young people especially when our friends invite us to smoke and to do weed and to hang out at places that we should not are we willing to put up a fight and say we will not submit to the temptations of shaitan we are willing to make real sacrifice and stay away from that when we want to sleep in the morning and shaitan is saying, take a nap. Wait another five minutes. Are we willing to put up a fight or will we allow him to urinate in our ears? When we are looking at the TV and something comes on that is not appropriate, are we willing to put up a fight and shut the TV off? Or when you are on your phones and there is a pop-up or there is a message that's not appropriate, or there is some disobedience or something your eyes should not look at or you are on the street and you are looking at something where you should be lowering your gaze are you willing to put up a fight and says I will not submit to the temptations of shaitan when you and your spouse are in an argument are you willing to put up a fight to shaitan and say I will not submit to the temptations of shaitan because shaitan wants me to yell Shaitan wants me to get angry, so I will zip it. I will show Shaitan that I will not submit to him because Shaitan wants to break my family. This is real sacrifice. This is real stoning. That the people in Hajj, they will be stoned in the Jamarat. But those of us who will be here, real stoning is when we stone Shaitan. Throw him out of your life. Kick him out of your life. And when we will perform our sacrifice, what are we slattering? It's those barriers that shaitan puts. Those barriers that prevent us from getting close to Allah. And you and I know the barriers in our lives. What are the things that are preventing you? Is it that, your, is it your luxury? Is it that need to feel high? Is it that need to feel popular? Is it your family? Is it your business? What is it that's preventing you from getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it your laziness? That is what we should sacrifice and bury. That is what we should slaughter. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all sinners. But alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us that we are here today. We are here today because Allah loves us. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, 
inni zahibun ila rabbi sayahdi he said I'm going to Allah Allah will guide me and I tell you what I want to leave with myself and you here today it's we are all sinners but Allah loves us let us go to Allah before it's too late no matter how big our sins are turn to Allah and real tawbah real seeking forgiveness is when we put our knife when we slaughter the things that are showing disobedience to Allah when we slaughter our bad habits the things that we don't want to go back to when we decide that we will slaughter it that is real tawbah it is not just saying astaghfirullah 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 and then you go back to it it is not just slaughtering a bull in this country or ten sheep in that country but still we commit adultery and we miss our salah and we eat and drink haram and we are disrespect, disrespectful to our parents and we are arrogant that is not sacrifice real sacrifice is when we make that commitment that we will not go back to our wrong things the people that will be performing Hajj on the day of Arafah they will be there crying they will be there with all their baggage begging Allah for his forgiveness for his mercy my dear gathering those of us who are here don't wait until the night of Zil Hijj when we will fast but because we are fortunate to be here today let us make that commitment that we will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from this moment on we are prepared and willing to put up a fight against shaitan and willing to put a knife and to slaughter our bad habits and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all have mercy upon us to bless us with the patience of Ismail and with the courage of Ibrahim alayhi salam and with the submission of Hajar alayhi salam I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease and I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this ummah and to make each and every one of us outstanding Muslims people who always return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people who always seek his forgiveness people who are always willing to make sacrifice for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبخل يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر